Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In this video, we'll be building some simple character movement and adding in animation that is synced across the network. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. For the character and animations in this video, I'll be using Mixamo, so you can just make a free account, head over to animations, and then I'm going to search for locomotion, which will give me an idle and a walking animation. It'll give me a few more too, but I'm only going to be using those. So let's go with a basic locomotion and then I'll hit download FBX for unity and then you can leave everything else as it is and hit download. Then back in unity, I've already taken out the animations and put them into this animations folder here. So we've got the actual model itself here, the bot, and then all the other animations are here. So we've got walking, idle and jump. For some reason, it's replaced the first letter with underscore in each of them, but you can see what the animation is down here by hitting play. And if I was to just go drop this into the scene, you see we have the player here. Now I'm going to want to make a prefab out of this to spawn in for each of the players. So I'll head to a prefabs folder and I'll drag that in as an original prefab and then get rid of it from the scene. Let's rename the prefab player and then I'll open that up. I'll compact the hierarchy and I'll reset the transform. And now we want to start adding some components. So first of all, I'm going to actually double the scale because in the scene that I've got here, they're pretty small if they're at scale one. So I've just put it up to two and then this will be a networked object. So let's add the network identity component. We'll be writing some movement logic. So we want to sync the transform. So let's add a network transform component and we'll give it client authority for the sake of this video. So whoever owns this player is able to move it on their client side and then it will tell the server and the server will sync it to everyone else. We're going to need a character controller. So let's add that and we'll put it up to a height of one and then we'll shrink the radius to be about 0.3. And then we need some code for the movement. So over in the scripts folder, I've made a script called player movement. It's currently empty. So let's attach it to the player and open that up in Visual Studio. So we're going to need this to be a network behavior because we want to actually make sure that only the owner will run the movement code. And then what we'll do is we'll add a header here for references and I'll add reference to the character controller so we can move it. I'll call it controller. I'll then want some settings for the move speed. So we'll add a header for settings and we'll add a float for the movement speed and we'll default it to five. And then for the movement logic, you can do it really however you like. I'll be doing a really simple implementation. So I'll just be using the update method and I'll add the client callback attribute, which just means that if we're running a build as a server, it just won't run this update method, but the clients should run it. And then the clients will check if they don't have authority over this player, then just return. There's no point trying to move it. Now, rather than setting up an input action map and adding all the key bindings and then adding the events, rather than doing all that, just for this simple example, I'll make a movement vector. So movement equals new vector three. And then for here, I'll just say if keyboard, whoops, keyboard dot current dot W key is pressed. So if they're holding down the W key, then the movement for this frame on the Z axis should be one or plus equals one. And then what we'll say is we'll copy paste this three more times and we'll say W key. So this is S key. And then we'll say over here the A key. And then finally the D key. And on the Z axis, if they press S, we'll minus equals one. So if they press both, they just don't move anywhere. And then we need these to both be on the X axis. And if they press A, it's to go left. So we minus. And if it's D, it's to go right. So we plus. So that's a quick and dirty way to get the movement working. And then we want to say here controller.move and we'll pass in the movement times by our movement speed and then times by the time.delta time. So it's frame rate independent. And then we want to rotate the player to face the direction they're moving in. So we could say here transform.rotation equals and there's a built in thing called quaternion.lookrotation and it'll give you a rotation that faces a certain vector. So if we just say rotate to face and then the direction we're moving in, which is movement, then that will work. The problem is if we don't move on a particular frame, then it will just snap back to zero, zero, zero. And that's not what we want. So we only want to do it if 
a certain condition is met. So let's just make this if statement. So the condition is going to check, are we actually moving? In that case, then rotate. Otherwise, if we're still, then don't. So we could say if controller.velocity.magnitude is greater than zero, then do it. But the problem of this is that if you have then the slightest movement where the velocity is like 0 0.001, then you'd start rotating and it would just be weird. So you want some value here that is small, but not too small. So I'm going to go with 0.2f for this. So let's give it a test. If I head back into Unity, let's go over to the prefab and we need to hook in the character controller. So let's drag that in. And then we need to tell the network manager, which is just set up like a default network manager, we need to tell it to spawn in this player prefab whenever uh, a client connects. So let's hit play and see what happens. So if I hit host and move the player over here, you see the movement does work and the player does rotate to the direction they are moving in. And then if I go over to this built client and join, we see both the players here. And if they move around, we do see them moving around and rotating. But it looks pretty weird with the characters just T-posing everywhere. So what if you want to add animation and you want to sync it over the network? So to add animation, we should go to the player prefab and we can add on the animator component. And with this, we then need an animator controller, which is the state machine for telling the player how to move between the different states. So let's go to animations and let's make a controller. Right click, create animator controller. And we'll call it controller underscore player, something like that. And in here, if we open up the animator window, which is window animation animator control six, Oh, sorry, not control six, it's just animator here. We can then drag in the different animations that we downloaded for the player. So if we drag in the idle animation, and in here it's called mixmo.com, so let's rename it to be idle. And then we'll also drag in the walking and call it walking. Now, there are other ways to do this kind of thing. You can use a blend tree, but that's getting a little bit more advanced. So just for this simple demo, we'll have these two states and we'll transition between the two. And for these transitions, we need to add a condition. So for this, I'm going to use a bool. So we'll add a new parameter here, bool, and I'll call it is walking. Now it's false by default, but it can become true. And we're gonna say here, to go from idle to walking, is walking needs to be true. And to go from walking to is idle, is walking needs to be false. You can tweak around with these transitions. So we can say, for example, they don't have exit time and the transition duration, so they kind of overlap to smoothly sync between the states. Maybe you want to tweak this. So I'm gonna go with, let's say 0.1 and turn off X time on the other, transition duration 0.1. So now we've got this set up, we can move between the, the animations, but there's a little bit more we need to actually do because if we go to this idle animation, you'll see over here on the side, it doesn't have loop time, which means that when the animation ends, it just freezes rather than looping back to the start. So we can check loop time. And we can also check loop pose to make it blend seamlessly. That sounds pretty good. So let's apply those both. And then we want to do the same for the walking. So if I click walking, let's tick them both and hit apply. All we need to do now is change this bool in code. So go back to our script. We need to add reference to an animator. So serialize field private animator equals null. And if we go to the bottom of our script or the bottom of the update, we want to say here, let's say on the animator, we'll set a bool. The bool is, is walking, that's what we called it. And then the actual value is basically the same as this, whether the velocity magnitude is greater than 0.2. So what this will do now is say, uh, is walking bool will be true if this condition is met and it'll be false if it isn't met. Now we haven't quite done because if we go back into Unity, go over to our player and hook in the animator here and then hook in the controller here. So we called it controller underscore player. If we were to hit play, everything might seem to be working. We'll hit play and the player will animate around. Cool. But that's not going to work over the network. We have nothing to actually sync it to the other client. So it's not going to appear on the other player's machines. So. Luckily for us, Mirror has a component included to help us with this. If we add a new component, there is the network animator. And this, just like the network transform, is already made for us. You can give client authority to allow them to change the animations and then drag in the animator. And that's pretty much it, but there's a few things to keep in mind. So 
Obviously, based on how you check this box, whether you do or don't, that will change how you actually need to change the animations. Because right now, we're doing this ball on client side. So with client authority, it works. If we unchecked this, it would not sync to the other clients. You'd need to change it on the server side. Also, on the animator, we have different parameter types, float, int, bool, and trigger. For the first three, it'll work with what we just did. You can just say set bool, set float, set uh, integer. But for the trigger, you can't just say animator.setTrigger. That doesn't actually work. Namira doesn't notice that and it doesn't sync it to the other client. If you want to use a trigger, you have to actually reference, if we look up here, we'd have to reference a network animator, network animator, and then you can say network animator dot set trigger. You'd have to do it this way. Just keep that in mind if you're using triggers, but for what we're doing, we're just using balls, so we can use that and get rid of the network animator here, and we can go test it now. If I go back into the scene, file, build and run, and I'll see you in a second. So here we are with a few different built clients, and if I'm down here now and I move the play around, you see the animation is synced as well as the position and the rotation. Everything is synced correctly. All the other players see it, which makes it feel pretty nice. And of course, I can switch clients and start moving this play around, and everyone else sees it synced. And over here, the same, and in the editor, the same. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what you want to see next. And if you want more Mirror content, I've got plenty of other videos on the channel. I'll be continuing to make more. And we recently released a course with Game Dev TV, building an RTS from scratch. So if you go check that out, the link is in the description below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Andrew Williams, Beard or Die, Benjamin Hilder, David McDermott, Farouk, Jake Nixon, Yoris Letter, Katinkamom, Luis Ramos, Matt Fryer, Sam Marcus, Malvin, and Rack. If anyone else would like to help support the channel monetarily, link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.